let's talk about purslane. So this little herb was the bane of my grandmother's existence. She and my grandpa worked so hard trying to get this weed out of their garden. Season after season, year after year, they would try everything they could think of to root this little guy up and they could never kill it. Can you imagine if they found out now that this plant is edible, medicinal, and good for so many things? It's even nutritious. Let's talk about purslane. First of all, let's talk about how it looks. So purslane grows in clumps with little stems like this growing out from in a circle around a central point. They have thick stems that are green or red. They have thicker waxy leaves. Right now the leaves aren't as thick as they can be. It's been kind of dry, but they have a very waxy feel. They also get little seed pods. Kind of hard to see them in here. Let me see if I can find one that's opened. Yes. So this is an example. If I can get the camera aimed right of what a seed pod looks like when it's been opened. And they, if you break them, this is what the stem looks like inside. And this is what a small one looks like inside. Oh look, it's just green. There is a toxic look-alike. I don't think they look at all alike, but one's growing by my chair, so let me show you. So this is our toxic look-alike. So similarly, they grow out from a central point, but the stems of these are average. They're not particularly fat. The leaves of this plant are flat. They're not waxy and they're not thick. So is this purslane? No, no it is not. And one other thing that sets it apart, the lookalike gets this white sap that comes out when you break it. I don't think they look at all alike. Um, thin and spindly, all parts of this are fat and structurally sound. So what can you do with this little plant? So last year, I was not a huge fan of this. I would take it, I would uh, chop it up really finely, I would freeze it and I use it over the winter in soups to add nutrition but also as a thickener uh, because it does, uh, similar to like filet powder, it does thicken your soups. So this year I was not really enthused about eating this because I teach kids at events how at different markets I teach them how to eat their weeds. And that involves me saying, blah, 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 blah. Want to try it? And I eat it with them. And so last year, like I said, I was not really a fan of this. I loved it nutritionally, hated it as far as taste and texture. So I don't know if it's because it's been a dry year this year, or if it's because I've eaten somewhere between 15 and 20 of these leaves at this point, but it has definitely grown on me. And now I can eat it and I'm good. So I noticed that some, there are differences in the taste of the leaves. Um, some of them are more lemony than others. Some taste a little bit like, you know, a weed at first, but then become more lemon. But overall, I would describe them as good. So you can eat them raw. In Eastern Europe, they use them a lot in cold salads. But you can also, of course, add them to soups, like I said, and hot dishes. And you can also take them, chop them up with garlic and oil and saute them together. So I'll probably be trying to do some experiments cooking this, but I don't know if they'll make it onto video. I don't want to make promises I can't keep. But 
Now you've seen what it is and you know some basics, let's talk about why you would want to eat this particular weed. Nutritionally, this is packed with nutrition. It contains um, high amounts of iron. It has vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E. It has omega-3 fatty acids. It has uh, beta carotene, absorbic acid, alpha linoleic -lino acid, um, antioxidants, fatty acids, um, B complex, potassium, magnesium, calcium, and phosphorus. So in regards to health, it's been used in a lot of different cultures in different ways. Um, the Greeks used it for constipation and irritation of the urinary system. Native Americans of different times types used it as a poultice on burns, as a juice for earaches, used it as a tea for headaches and stomach aches. Europeans used it for sores, eczema, abscesses, itching, and painful urination. Uh, Chinese, Chinese traditional medicine used it to stop postpartum bleeding. Um, it's been used to um, as an antibiotic. It has the potential to help diabetes that uh, the diabetes induced kidney uh, damage and inflammation. It might protect your lungs and your oral cavities from cancer. It might also help with arthritis, osteo osteoporosis, um, what else? Um, low blood pressure, which is an unusual thing. I usually don't find that. Um, it contains, contains folate. It's a good one to know if you are considering getting pregnant. So overall, it's pretty, pretty good weed, pretty uh, versatile. I have some favorite recipes. I will post this one here. This is my favorite. I made this last year. It's supposed to be a stew, right? But by the time we put in the purslane, it thickened it enough that it was a chicken main dish instead of a chicken stew. And both my husband and I really liked it. Um, I'm actually thinking if it's not too hot this week, I'm probably going to make some. I'm also, I'm also going to freeze some of it um, while I see it, while it's out, while it's on my mind. I'm just gonna chop it, put it in freezer bags or some kind of container that is air safe. Uh, one thing though that I do need to tell you about is these go, like I said, they grow from a central point, they grow out, but they're very low to the ground. And that means their potential to get dirt and sand in, in between their leaves is high. So you have to wash these really, really, really well. Um, lots of soaking or spraying or swishing in the water. Um, I usually do a mix of all three just because it is so hard to get the dirt out from um, in this plant. So if you see it, it's a good one to put some kind of mulch under it or wood chips, things like that, just to keep it off the ground so that it's easier for you to clean. Um, especially, you know, when it rains and the dirt gets everywhere, then these really get, they really get dirt just all <laughs> infused in them. So highly recommend though, after you clean them off very nicely and you take the seeds out, um, because they do, they are teeny tiny seeds. I don't know if you can even see that. But after you take out the seeds and send them to your friends in need who do not have purslane in their areas and want it, I highly recommend that you wash it real well, chop it up, freeze it, and then all you have to do when you wanna use it as a thickener during the winter is chuck that in the pot with your soup. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, can't taste it in the flavor of your soup unless you put, you know, like a metric crap ton. Um, but it does nutritionally add a lot to your soups. So that is our weed of the week. So I hope you like this video. As always, don't forget to uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and as always, 
eat something wild. May I recommend per sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, allergic to nature. <laughs>